Hello and welcome everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. Many students struggle in scoring well in exam because they miss on two crucial aspects. One is not having right understanding of syllabus. Knowing what keywords are there is not enough. You need to know what is the utility of that keyword. What are the spectrum of questions which can be asked from that keyword? And what is the utility at different stages, prelims, mains, interview? And for that, you need to follow the second step. That is going through previous year question papers diligently. Whatever you are gaining from the series, Lakshmi Khan series contest, you need to reflect through previous year question papers. Are you gaining confidence or not? Are you able to solve those questions or not? Otherwise, what is going to happen? You may be good. You may become good in certain areas and miss on certain other aspects from where UPSC can ask questions. For example, subordinate codes. So UPSC has consistently asked questions on Nalsa, Lok Adalat, Gram Nyalas. But students take these topics lightly. Their major focus is on Supreme Court and High Court when it comes to judiciary. And maybe it's on certain key, you can say, events or judgments. That's it. But you have to clear the exam. This is a competition, right? Your strategy should be fine-tuned. So let's start subordinate courts and give attention to the details because devil is in the detail. And I'm also going to mark Q, means question, from where question may be asked. Subordinate court are mentioned in part six of Indian constitution, article 233 to 237. So wh why we are using the word subordinate courts? In the previous sessions, I've told you that we have integrated judiciary, Supreme Court, High Court, then subordinate court. At district level and below that also we have certain courts. So we call them subordinate courts, right? Now, appointment of district judges, appointment. And please understand, UPSC can play with you by saying in one statement, appointment of judges at district level and appointment of district judge. So there's a difference between the two, right? Because judges at district level can be other judges as well. For example, additional district judge, metropolitan magistrate, right? So you need to give attention to the district judge, okay? So appointment, posting, promotion of district judge in a state done by governor of the state in consultation with high court. Now tell me, have I mentioned SPSC here? No. So who is appointing? Governor is appointing in consultation with high court. So primary role is with high court actually, right? Have we mentioned a state government here? No, we have not mentioned state government, here, right? So primary power is in hand of high court, right? A person to be appointed as district judge should have the following qualifications. Qualifications are not already be in the service by the central government and state government. You cannot be part of government and you simultaneously will say, sir, uh, please appoint me as district judge. Okay. He should have been an advocate or a pleader for seven years. He should be recommended by the high court for appointment recommended by the high court for appointment obviously should be citizen of india no appointment of other judges and there's a difference here right judges in subordinate judiciary means at the level of district court or below that okay appointment of person other than district judges to judicial service of a state are made by governor appointment is made by governor but process is different right after consultation with spsc means state public service commission and the high court so in case of Judges at the level of district, the question can be asked on difference. So difference is SPSC. I hope now you're not going to make the mistake. Now control over subordinate court. So high court has the control, right? And district judge at the level of district is having prime responsibility, right? The control over district court and other subordinate court, including the posting, promotion, leave, person belonging to judicial service of the state. So all these functions lie with high court. I hope you remember in the previous session when we were discussing high court, I told you about supervisory jurisdiction. And in the Supreme Court chapter, I asked one question, whether Supreme Court has supervisory jurisdiction over subordinate court or not. So answer was no. You cannot say, sir, it is the apex court. Why we are not saying that supervised jurisdiction of Supreme Court extends to district court? There are so many districts. Do you want to burden Supreme Court more? Right? That is why the supervised jurisdiction of subordinate court lie with only high court. Now, structure and jurisdiction. So, this is the structure. 
please look at this side means civil court and criminal court here we have revenue court where when you are going to become civil servant you will have role here now civil court district judge or district session judge sub judge family court municipal court small causes court criminal court we say sessions court district session judge metropolitan magistrate or first class magistrate second class magistrate third class magistrate and in revenue court we have board of revenue commissioner or collector tehsildar nayab tehsildar sub collector means sub divisional magistrate also have say in case of revenue court there is a there is a revenue court of sub divisional magistrate also sdm right but we are focusing here okay now district judge is also called as session judge although district judge is having responsibility with respect to civil as well as session matters okay when i say sessions it means criminal nature when i say civil it means we are talking about civil nature civil procedural code is going to be applied in case of uh, sessions ipc right inner penal code is going to be applied or you can say referred he is the highest judicial authority in the district now he possesses original and appellate jurisdiction there can be a question from here so original jurisdiction what does it mean it means cases of civil nature or criminal nature can come before district judge okay in first instance so this is called this is called original jurisdiction but appellate means can come via appeal and appeal can come only from lower court now some of you might be thinking sir this is this is district judge and he is also having or she is also having this position is also having appellate jurisdiction yes just take a look so we have below this below the status we have other courts as well na so judgment can be appealed here okay so both is there means original as well as appellate theek hai original as well as appellate and criminal matter as well as civil matter okay there can be a question he exercises the judicial and administrative administrative power now judicial power you know when he is acting like a judge and administrative power include the management of staff in the judiciary at the level of district or below that okay that is administrative function you know uh, the way files are going to be processed the way cases are going to be taken up the way uh, court fees is going to be accumulated right that is administrative function he also has supervisory power over all subordinate district court this is we have discussed appeals against the orders and judgments of district judge lies at the level of high court because above district judge there is only one stop that is high court right i hope these things are clear to you now the session judge has the power to impose any sentence including life imprisonment capital imp imprisonment means death sentence okay but in case of death death sentence i told you in the high court part death sentence cannot be executed till that death sentence is reviewed by high court of that state whether that person who has received death sentence uh, you can say appeal or not okay a capital punishment passed by him subject to confirmation by high court okay whether there is an appeal or not right i hope you will remember that twice we have discussed it now let's talk about nalsa national legal service authority first question which which i should ask from you is what is the utility of nalsa why there is nalsa what nalsa do what is the status of nalsa since we are saying it's a authority is it a constitutional authority is it mentioned in constitution or it is a statutory authority means mentioned in a law made by parliament what is its status or it is a executive authority means not mentioned in constitution and neither we have a law made by parliament in this regard this was made just by executive resolution of the cabinet what do you think what is the status come on answer i can actually directly teach you but why i ask in this way because there is a rule in psychology when you are going to commit mistake and you get the right answer there is high probability you are not going to forget that and that's our purpose now article 39a do you remember free legal aid dpsps we discussed it right so it, it was a constitutional promise right it was a direction to the state that whenever you make policies when you are having resources you should actually make efforts to give free legal aid because if you have created you know uh, so many courts but having justice is a costly affair then how can a how can a poor person actually uh, attain justice then it if poor person is not able to attain justice because that person is not having money 
then don't you think it is injustice in itself? System is not allowing that person to take services of court, right? So that is why we created NALSA, okay? Of the Constitution of India, free legal aid in poor weaker sections. Article 14, equality before law. So it should not be like now that if someone is rich, that person has committed murder. Now the father of that person who got murdered is not able to actually file a case because that person is not having money. So don't you think this would be equality, this would be against the principle of equality before law as well as equal protection of law. So that is why we need, we needed NALSA. Along with this, Article 22, sub clause 1, if you remember, for example, if you are being arrested, then you should be told reason why you are being arrested by the police. So if you are being arrested arbitrarily, so you can only come out if that police is having kripa over you or other, other ways that you have an advocate taking stand for you before magistrate. So you need an advocate and if you don't have money, how you are going to come out? That is why we needed some authority. And that's why NALSA was created through an act of parliament. If it is created by an act of parliament, what is the answer? Answer is a statutory body. Okay. Legal Service Act enacted 9 November 1995. NALSA has been constituted under this act, means statutory body, to monitor and evaluate. Now, please remember the functions, objectives. Okay. UPSC has asked question on NALSA on this aspect. What NALSA do actually? Monitor and evaluate implementation of legal aid program. Can you actually tell me some legal aid program which was recently in news? Means a program by government for providing legal aid to the poor people. Can you name some program, scheme of government, initiative? Fast. Think. No? Search about telelaw. What is Telela? What government is providing in this? How this Telelo facility is going to be provided? What is the role of CSCs here, common service centers? Should be aware of this. Okay. In every state, a state legal service authority, in every high court, high court legal service committee have been constituted. Okay. District legal service authorities, taluk legal service committees have been constituted in district and the most of the taluks. Taluks, you know, blocks to give effect to the policies and directions of the NALSA. Now, why these are being created? Now, you should not think that these are bodies totally independent of NALSA. Some students have these, these kind of misconceptions. But read this line means these bodies were created so that the purpose of NALSA can be fulfilled. Right to give effect to the policies and directions of NALSA. Directions. What is directions? UPSC will play on these points. Okay. Now, provide free legal aid service to the people. Now, one statement which UPSC can play with you is that Lok Adalats were also created as per this Legal Service Authority Act. Now, what is what you are going to think? Question is from Lok Adalat, but UPSC is linking. Legal Service Authority Act and Lok Adalat. Come on, what's your guess? Some of you might think, sir, Lok Adalat seems different. It is Adalat. And this NALSA is actually providing free legal aid means advocates, court fee, documentation work. But Lok Adalat is a proper Adalat. So how can these two be connected? But the reality, my friend, is that they are connected from the same law. And that is why this is a trap question where many students are going to be trapped, but you should not. Okay. So we are going to elaborate it further. NALSA lays down policies, principles, guidelines, frames, economical for the state legal service authorities to implement legal service programs throughout the country. Primarily state legal service authorities, district legal service authorities, taluk legal service committees, etc. have been asked to discharge the following functions and functions are these three functions. First, free and competent legal service free and competent legal service who is going to provide legal service advocates right free of cost advocates second to organize loka dalits or for amicable settlement of disputes means without fighting the case in the formal court you can resolve that case peacefully in loka dalit 
so lok adalat is also connected with the same law right now to organize legal awareness campaign so you got three primary uh, you can say ways in which this nalsa system work now free legal service include what is included one is court fee second is lawyer and third is documentation documentation during the proceeding of the case along with this if you need to file an appeal so in both the case because documentation affidavit all of them need you know money to be paid so this will be taken care of by nalsa or these legal service authorities so i hope you will remember these keywords right court fee lawyer and documentation and it would be quite quite easy for you now right now lok adalats so lok adalats is a forum so first of all what's what's the meaning of the word lok adalat lok means public adalat means court means it's a public court and actually it is different from the conventional court because the working of lok adalat is flexible right it is flexible and it is made so that your matter can be resolved in a speedy way right and it is bit of informal as well which has pending in because you know that lot of cases are pending in all the courts and that is why lok adalat actually uh, can actually working as a cushion to resolve these you know pending cases not yet brought before up now there is a scope of question from here okay read this and i'm going to uh, also show a question which was asked from here lok adalat is a forum where the cases or disputes which are pending in a court or which are pre litigation stage not yet brought before the court are compromised or settled in an amicable manner so two aspects are written here one is pending or those which are in pre litigation stage means case has not started yet the case has been just filed okay in both the cases matter can be taken up in lok adalat right please remember it because uh, in upsc one statement is going to be made that only pre litigation cases can be taken up in lok adalat that would be wrong okay now the word lok adalat means people court based on gandhian principle remember is one of the components of alternative dispute re redressal mechanism or system means rather than going in long litigations and expensive litigations resolve the disputes out of the court as indian courts are overburdened with backlog of cases and regular courts are to be decided that involving lengthy expensive and tedious so that is why it's a resolution process now statutory status first of all lok adalat is a executive body or statutory body i told you statutory body right institution of lok adalat was given statutory status under legal service authority act 1987 that is why i was saying nalsa and lok adalat are linked to the same law right i hope it is clear now act was provision related to organization functioning of lok adalat the state legal service authority or district service legal service authority supreme court legal service committee so at the level of supreme court high court we have these committees for the same purpose they have advocates to actually support you know give free legal aid high court legal service committee taluk legal service committee may organize lok adalat so who can organize lok adalat this can be a question at what stage it means lok adalat is going to be you can say organized so this is my understanding that ma many students when they read about lok adalat they have this you know notion in mind oh we are talking about lok adalat so they must be actually organized at the level of say sub division village right that's some mental picture many students have in this mind right so that is why if upsc play on this point many student would say oh it means taluk legal service authority or district legal service authority they should be the one who are going to organize lok these lok adalats why would actually th these uh, high court based committees or supreme court based committees organize so this is where there will be a trap okay so if you are gaining from these series and you are actually this way of actually uh, make you understand these things if you are gaining from this method do let me know in comments or you can share with your friends as well now every lok adalat organized for an area shall consist of such number of serving or retired judicial officers generally a lok adalat consists of a judicial officer as chairman judicial officer as a chairman there can be question from here from composition point of view a lawyer advocate and a social worker as member all right so composition will also include lawyer or social worker social worker is also there okay 
Now, any case pending before the court can be referred to the Lok Adalat for settlement if the parties there thereof agree that yes, we want to go to Lok Adalat, or any one party actually apply that we want to go to Lok Adalat, or court itself actually found that this case is actually fit for Lok Adalat means is appropriate to transfer Lok Adalat. So, in any of these cases, matter can be referred to Lok Adalat. Okay, and if matter if someone has actually filed you know paid a court fee and now court has said your matter is quite simple why don't you go to Lok Adalat so when your matter has gone to Lok Adalat and that has been resolved there amicably then your court fee is also going to be returned refunded Lok Adalat shall have the same power as Western civil court while trying to rest you know in these matters so what does what does it mean it means enforcing the attendance of any witness means witness is the keyword you know should know discovery and production of any document reception of evidence on affidavit the acquisition of any public record or document such matters uh, may be presented so it means for actually you know while taking decision what a judge require it requires some proof arguments witness documents so all of them can be actually used in Lok Adalat as well okay Lok Adalat has these parts. All proceedings before a Lok Adalat shall be deemed to be judicial proceedings with the meaning of Indian Penal Code also. So it means criminal nature cases are also going to be taken up. Right? And every Lok Adalat shall be deemed to be a civil court for the purpose of Code of Criminal Procedures. Benefits of Lok Adalat. Court fee can be re actually refunded. A speedy trial hai, flexible hai. There is no strict application of procedures like CPC, CRPC, means concept of natural justice can be used. The parties to the dispute directly interact and judge through their counsel, which is not possible in court of law. Means you have a counsel and you can directly interact with the judge. The award by Lok Adalat is binding on the parties and the status of decree of a civil court and it's known appealable. Once UPSC asks question from here, known appealable, what does it mean? And why known appealable? Don't you think it can be injustice also? Means a matter has been decided in Lok Adalat and you want to repeat you want to appeal in further. You cannot appeal. Why? Because in Lok Adalat it is not like judge is pronouncing a judgment. So in Lok Adalat, method uses alternative dispute reversal. It means both parties will actually agree. They will shake hands. Okay, we are settling on this. And the Lok Adalat will sign the order that both parties have agreed on these, these conditions. It means resolved. So if both parties have agreed in Lok Adalat, why you want to waste the time of court further? Now if you answer, if you ask, sir, if there is no scope of appeal, yes, there is a scope. And the scope is, if one of the parties says that I am illiterate or I was not of sound mind, when such sign or such signatures were taken from me, on this basis, appeal can be done. Legal Service Authorities Act 1987 also talks about having permanent Lok Adalat. What does it mean? There may be certain cases related to public utilities. For that, there can be a permanent Lok Adalat. District judge or additional judge or held judicial higher rank means above this additional district judge can actually be part of that composition. Chairman would be district judge or ADJ or any anyone above this rank. Now, what is public utility we are talking about? If there is dispute related to transport service, air, road, water, postal, telegraph, telephone service, supply of power, light, water. So, these are public utilities, right? Permanent Logadal shall excise jurisdiction in respect to more public services. Now, you must be aware of this fact. If not, then listen to this. Majority of litigations which are pending in court, one party is government. And that is why to reduce the litigation, what many governments are doing, they are actually absolving their stake in the litigations. This is happening. So, this is the alternative mechanism to settle this in Lok Adalat. Now, pecuniary jurisdiction. It means if a case is related to some money. For example, you are in contract and you were bound to pay someone, but you have not paid. So, that would be pecuniary jurisdiction if such matter is being discussed. Permanent Lok Adalat shall be up to 10 lakh rupees. Matter can be discussed in this. However, the central government may increase this how means of how much money cases can be taken up in this permanent Lok Adalat. 
Now, before dispute is brought before any court, any party of the dispute make an application to the permanent Lok Adalat for settlement of dispute. After the application is made to the permanent Lok Adalat, no party that application shall invoke jurisdiction of any court in the same dispute. So, it means once it is filed in permanent Lok Adalat, then you cannot simultaneously file a case on the same dispute in any other court. Don't waste the time of any other court if you file a case in permanent Lok Adalat. Then we have family court. Why, we are why, we are why they are called family court? Because there are so many cases related to you know, family disputes. For example, divorce, separation, you know, marriage issues, alimony. So Family Court Act 1984 was enacted to provide establishment of family court. Now, status of family court, is it an executive constitution statutory? Statutory, because there is a law, parliamentary law for that. Marriage and family affairs. Now, reasons. So, 59th report of law commission suggested that, that stressed that dealing with the disputes concerning the family, the court adopt an approach radically different from the adopted in ordinary civil proceedings. Because if there is a matter related to tax, fraud, those are different nature. And family disputes are of different nature. So, why you are using same judicial methods? Right? Many family disputes can be resolved through mediation purpose. Right? give us some chance for to second thought without engaging into legalities. That is why this family court as an institution was established for speedy trial and you know, having less burden. The code of civil procedure was amended in 1976 to provide for a special procedure to be adopted in suits and proceedings related to matters concerning family. Because within family also there can be a tax dispute, there can be a, a dispute related to land, right, money, right. This is the major dispute. So these disputes come under civil procedure. So this civil procedure was amended so that alternative judicial process can be used for ma for these matters, family matters. Now main objective reason for settling family courts to create specialized court. One thing is that exclusively deal with family matters instead of mechanism for conciliation as I told you. Sometimes methods can be actually disputes can be resolved through mediation giving second thought. Inexpensive remedy it is flexibility and informal atmosphere this is needed for the resolution of dispute features are family court by state government in consultation with high court judges now state government word is used okay state go government constituted fam constituting family court in consultation with high court it makes obligatory on state governments to set up a family court in every city or town with a population exceeding 1 million more than talnak population it provides only one right of appeal and shall lie on the level of high court. Means there can be one appeal and that is at the level of high court. This is, can also be a scope of question. Now it exclusively provides jurisdiction of the family courts, rel matters related to property of spouses, legitimacy of any person, guardianship, maintenance of wife, children, parents, nullity of marriage, judicial separation, conjugal rights. So these are the family matters. Now we have Gram Nyalas. Gram Nyalas, as the name suggests, Nyalas at the level of Gram, right? Now, in, in some areas, we have districts having more than 700 villages, yes, in one district, right? And it is very expensive for a person from a village to come to the district or even subdivision for a case hearing, right? And that is why many actually, you know, suffer exploitation because they can't devote that much time and resources. So that is why we invented this concept of Gram Nyalas. It is like uh, justice at your door, right? Now, Gram Nyalas Act 2008 has been enacted to provide for the establishment of Gram Nyalas. It means it's a statutory body, grassroots level for the providing access to justice of citizens of their doorstep. As I told you, justice at doorstep. Ensure opportunities for securing justice, not denied citizen, socio-economic and their other disabilities. If someone is not having money or any other factor, that that person should not be limited from the justice. Now, they are appointed by state government in consultation with high court. Two courts have told you having same format when it comes to their constitution, means organizing them. That is family court as well as Gram Nyalas, right? They have same process. Gram Nyalas shall be established in every panchayat at intermediate level. It means block level. Gram Nyalas shall be mobile court. It means it is not like, like, uh, like going to be a brick mortar. Okay, it may be possible Gram Nyala is being organized in a government school, then a dispensary, then some other government school. Okay. 
एंड प्लीज रिमेंबर बोथ क्रिमिनल एंड सिविल मैटर्स कैन बी टेकन अप एट दिस लेवल सो हल्के में नहीं लेने का राइट यू शुड नॉट टेक इट लाइटली बोथ सिविल एंड क्रिमिनल क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट फ्रॉम यर ग्राम न्यायालय शेल ट्राई टू सेटल द डिस्प्यूट एज फार एज पॉसिबल ब्रिंगिंग अबाउट कंसिलेशन बिटवीन द पार्टीज कंसिलेशन इज ऑल्सो वे ग्राम न्यायालय शेल नॉट बी बाउंड बाई एविडेंस एक्ट इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट एंड नेचुरल जस्टिस प्रिंसिपल कैन बी यूज अपील इन क्रिमिनल केसेज शाई लाइ टू द कोर्ट ऑफ सेशन कोर्ट ऑफ सेशन मीन्स एट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड शेल बी हर्ड एंड डिस्पोज ऑफ विद इन अ पीरियड ऑफ सिक्स मंथ दिस इज वॉट इट सेज एंड दिस कैन बी अ क्वेश्चन सम स्टूडेंट्स विद थिंग सर इज देर अ लॉ रिगार्डिंग दिस इफ देर इज अ अपील फ्रॉम ग्राम ग्राम न्यायालय एट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल दैट मैटर शुड बी डिस्पोज ऑफ एट इन सिक्स मंथ लॉ से इज दैट बट डज इट हैपन रियली दैट्स अ डिफरेंट स्टोरी नाउ अटेंड दीज क्वेश्चन विद रेफरेंस to lok adalat which of the following statements are correct read state each statement lok adalat have the jurisdiction to settle the matters at pre litigative stage and not those matters pending before any court what do you think statement is true or false it is false because i have told you both ways in both cases pending as well as pre litigation lok adalat can deal with matters which are civil and not criminal this is also wrong i told you criminal also Every local adalat consists of either serving retired judicial officer only and not any other person. That is also wrong. I told you about social worker, advocate. So none of the statement is true. I think now it is clear to you. These kind of questions have been asked by UPSC. Composition also we discussed. District judge in a state are appointed by governor. We discussed it, right? And on the advice or consultation of high court. now with reference to gram nyayalay act which of the following is as are correct as per act gram nyayalay can hear only civil cases and not criminal cases tell me is it correct or not it is incorrect we have just discussed both act allows local social activist as mediator conciliator that is correct so it means only two is correct composition we discussed or you can see here right the power of district collector as a district magistrate are maintaining law and order control over police to check passports of foreigners now the word is control red land revenue collect red land revenue or you can say adjudicate matters of land revenue that could have been correct but control land revenue that is incorrect so that is why abc clear now Answer the following question by correct. Achoo, you need to identify correct. According to appellate system, a person dissatisfied with the verdict given by the court of district judge could appeal on which of the following level? High court. We discussed it, right? Specifically, the statement was there. See, right? So I hope now these things are clear to you, and you are not going to commit these mistakes. If you have any doubt whatsoever, you can shoot me a message on my personal Insta. Shashank dot power being. I'll be more than happy to help you out. This PDF is going to be available in Shashank Tiagi for you Telegram group. See you.